G'day folks, we're back again. Day two, or day three actually. Um, I've got the old EGR valve out. I've gone down again today to Auburn, went back down there to pick up the right EGR valve, which I've purchased. Now hopefully this sound's not too bad. We've got uh, in the background, they're resurfacing our road due to all the floods we had last year. So I was supposed to do it last Wednesday and they're doing it today. I've got the new EGR valve, which comes as a kit, obviously. So the part numbers this time look correct. The reference code on the top of the original one that was on there matches what was on their listing. It all looks pretty hunky-dory. Comes with the gaskets as well, new gaskets. So I'll just sit them up there and we'll get this bolted on and hopefully that sorts my issue. So I looked at a number of these on eBay and they all seem very similar. To me, it looks like the way they're manufactured is that shaft that goes from the top down and that's what controls the butterfly valve in there. They must put that in first and then that flap goes in and it looks like it's sort of soldered or tack welded on, which may be part of the issue. It's not all cast out of one piece for obvious reasons. So I'm just hoping that this one doesn't decide to break off like the old one, which caused us the issue. So we'll get it bolted up anyway and see how we go. Let's get into it. I covered these up last night just with plastic bags so that they didn't get any crap in them or dust overnight. That's the original plate there. There is a gasket under that. Now I don't know if... No, that's right. This gasket is what goes there and then that goes onto it, which I've got the original on the floor. So I'll start grabbing the bolts and putting them back in where they go. So that's my planned layout. I drew a rough sketch when I pulled this apart. Top left hand bolt, bottom left hand, Top manifold, bottom manifold, top right, bottom right, mounting bracket, etc. And I'll just replace them back in the same sequence. So that's the old one. As you can see, the flap totally gone from inside. And the new one, side by side, like so. I'd actually like to plug it back in and turn the key on and see what that does, just out of curiosity. But in case it um, does something that's not right. But yeah, it's identical it's just a generic copy it's not the genuine nissan because they were a thousand odd bucks and by doing each bolt individually there's less chance of getting them in the wrong hole and then the length's not working I've filmed where the hoses came off so that there's no chance of me getting them back on the wrong way in case the flow direction matters. Um, so I filmed it on my phone the other day so that at least, yeah, there's just no chance of getting it wrong. So I'll watch this video back with headphones on so I can hear it above this little machine going backwards and forwards and uh, connect that up, put the pipe back on. that one from that pipe goes to the back all right that makes sense this back one this back pipe here goes to the back the back outlet on the EGR so that one goes up there all right I'll clamp those on get the pipe on reset the ECU and fingers crossed she fires up and again I put those plastic bags on just to minimize any dirt and dust getting into the radiator hoses just any contamination that you want to avoid back up to where that was the other one's a little bit trickier to get to especially when there's a camera in the way but if we go like this clamp it's probably easier if that clamps facing towards the front of the motor because at least you can get here with your pliers so if we can spin that around with a bit of luck so a lot easier so spin the clamp around towards the front of the motor and then you can slide that back up where it was originally all right so that clamps back in place so 
that's done we'll get this pipe on might have to do a little bit of a degrease too i think that timing cover gasket is leaking a little bit at the bottom there giving me a bit of black oily down towards the bottom of the motor so i'll give that a bit of a clean up too once it's all back together we'll get this pipe on and go from there i use that little o light it's a seeker 2 pro or pro seeker 2 brilliant for doing stuff like this you've got about five different settings you've got a super bright works really well this is daylight and it's as you can see it really lights up really well so there get a good good little torch like that just to keep in your dashboard works a treat again guys nothing worse than stressing about your car repairs but i'm just putting on the headphones today listen to a bit of stand-up comedy it'll drone out the noise of the uh, road resurfacing fellas as well and just takes your mind off what you're doing sort of thing so all right so that's the factory gasket that's the new gasket it went on that way and it does look like there's a little indent line in it okay so i laid it down on the floor on that diagram that i showed a moment ago i did lay it down on the floor that way you can see that little indented line running around it the camera may pick it up and then on the back there's another line which you can just feel with your fingernail which the new one has the same thing it's got an indent on the front and a bit of a line on the back so it sits in like a recess maybe yeah it does so it probably just helps to seal it right off all right we'll get that in i did give this pipe a bit of a clean out too i think there's still a little bit of sooty scaly in there but it's virtually impossible to get it fully clean and again just a plastic bag over that with a rubber band on it overnight just to minimize any getting in there now the kit the kit obviously doesn't come with a new gasket down the bottom there it only comes with one on the top here because you probably aren't expected to take this off as well the old gasket i can leave on there and use uh, this new gasket's for the top so a couple of turns to get it, the thread started bottom one in make sure the gaskets aligned so i've tightened obviously these the four mounting bolts they're all tightened up as you saw earlier so there's no hassle of the spanner not fitting in now it's just a matter of doing these two up and these two 14 mil nuts back onto there i'll plug it in Put the battery back in i'll jump in and do the factory ecu um, reset and then hopefully it'll start up without any issues i'm so so anxiously fingers crossed i'll tell you bloody cars they're the necessary evil 12 mil again and i can't reiterate enough pre-soaking these bolts overnight i can't believe what a difference it made if that's not the tip of the century or hack whatever you want to call it pre-soak your bolts overnight and it makes getting them out so much easier unbelievable we've got that bracket to go back on another awesome little thing i got through my work i've got it here in my pocket little magnetic tool pickup or pickup magnetic pickup tool you drop a bolt somewhere that literally will stick anything metal obviously not aluminium or alloy but it'll stick to anything metal and just allows you to allows you to lean down into those small spots and it's not bendable but telescopic if you've got a line of sight works a treat a couple of bucks through work and then once i've tightened these up i'll just do one final check to make sure everything's on and where it should be and then we'll do that reset only problem with this is you've got very limited distance to tighten it so you've got to keep taking it off spinning your spanner around but if that's the least of my worries i uh, can't remember how i've got this one now this is where the ratchet spanners are really good if you don't have a long 14 mil deep socket you've got enough room between the radiator shroud and the and the front of the timing case these ratchet spanners are brilliant you can even if you only get a slight bit of movement that's enough that you can click it a few more and tighten it up a bit <coughs> And again in a week or so i'll check these bolts are all nice and tight all right let's make sure these are all tight getting that battery out of the way made a massive difference i just don't want to over tighten it just in case all right these back in this is the little bracket i think it just stops that moving around or flexing too much probably through heat over time right, and that one can go in there i'll put an extension bar on the 14 mil or 12 mil socket and make it easy and the other thing too with a lot of these bolts you don't want to over tighten them because you're going into 
threaded holes on your inlet manifold which being a cast alloy or aluminium whatever it is over time metal can harden or soften outside of sort of extremes and you don't want to over tighten it and shear something off because the last thing I want to be doing is having to pull all the inlet manifold off and replacing all of that as well so I always err on the underside of caution and I would rather have to come back in a week and tighten these up a little bit or put a little bit of thread lock on them all right moment of truth now I'll jump in so that's all fitted up we'll plug it back in put the battery back in and then basically I'll hop in and do the ECU reset which is a sequence of accelerator depressors and holding for so many seconds and then letting off and there's a sequence to do it okay that's on all right so a little prayer come on nav please look after me and fingers crossed battery back in first little tip too if you i mean cable ties are dirt cheap but if you've got a couple of decent ones that you know you're going to be able to use down the track and you have used them instead of just snipping them off you get a real fine point screwdriver down inside there between that section with the lines and the actual little locator the lock hopefully that's showing up yeah if you get a little pointy screwdriver down in between there you can push that down and that then allows you to pull your zip tie back out so to save just pointlessly cutting that off and throwing it in the bin i can put that back in my electrical bag now the battery it has to go back in battery tray goes back in Oh, heavy doing that one hand. And you always put your positive on first because at least if your negative bumps there or bumps the body of the car, there's no chance of arcing up. So that's that. All right, so that's nice and tight. And what I'll do here too, I don't want to put the positive and negative terminals back on one battery before I put at least the positive back on the other just no risk of shorting so i'll leave that negative off i'll put this positive on and then i'll put both negatives on and that way there's, there's less chance anyway of you short circuiting something or touching and causing a spark so i'll do the passenger side and then um, bolt it up this is why it always pays if you've got nuts and bolts i always take off things i put in little storage trays in the garage that bolt that holds the negative terminal on it's basically stripped down towards the end so no matter how much i tighten the nut up i just can't tighten that bolt up so i've got a few bits and pieces in these little plastic trays in a storage container in the shed so i've just grabbed another one six mil by about 20 mil long hasn't got the big flat square section that sits into the hole but i'll just put a banner on the back tighten that up and a nut and washer on the front so but yeah it pays you to keep any old nuts and bolts you take off all right so terminals on terminals on terminal terminal i've just got to tighten this up i'll jump in i don't know well i've got to turn the key on anyway to do the ecu reset so i'll turn the key on and i'll see if this makes the funny noise that it used to make prior to it dying uh, that might be a good start to let me know if it's working 100 percent so let's have a look mandy can i pinch you for a sec yeah can you turn it to on Turn it off. Yeah, it does seem to be making the sound that the old one used to before it died, so fingers crossed, alright. I'll jump in and do the ECU reset. Thank you for your assistance, Mandy. Now this one might be a bit hard to film whilst holding the camera, but there is a sequence. I'll just look it up quickly on YouTube. Moment of truth, folks. I think from memory you turn the key on, three pumps of the accelerator, then you hold it for 10 seconds or something, then you turn the key off and the check engine light will flash down on the side here. I might unplug my scan gauge just in case that wants to do anything stupid as well. Try and do this all sort of one-handed, folks. So sorry about the unsteadiness. I found on the Navara forum the method. So moment of truth, fingers crossed, anxiety levels through the roof. Let's see. So, ignition on, count to three. One, two, three, press the pedal. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fully depress the accelerator. 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Release. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Press the accelerator. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Release. Turn off. Now it says I should be able to just start the engine and we're done. So let's give it a shot. I'm so nervous, folks, I tell you. Worse than my wedding day. Neutral. Well, she's idling. I wonder what our revs are like. Still getting a bit of black soot out the back. Maybe it is the suction control valve, I'm not sure. Or it could just be running a little bit rough because of what happened to it. I'll just let it idle for a tick. Then I might try doing that ECU reset again because the check engine light didn't come on at any point, which it says it normally does. Maybe I didn't do that 100% correctly. Well, I'm a little bit excited. I haven't turned the car off. I just thought I'd flick the camera back on and update. It is actually revving properly now, so maybe it just did have a bit of crap in the tubes from all the overfueling from the weekend. It looks like it's revving fine. I don't think I'm getting a lot of soot. I oh, know, I've been told that I've got a, I have got a bit of soot out the back, so maybe I will have to redo the ECU reset. All right, folks, well, I gave it a couple of revs and it did blow a bit of black soot, but I think it was probably just all the fumes that would have been caught in the exhaust and possibly the, the, the pipe line, so to speak, from the weekend because it went in limp mode. We no sooner pulled over with it blowing a lot of black soot and turned it off, had it towed here and haven't had it started until now. So I'd say all those fumes were just in the line. I gave it a couple of revs. It's certainly out of limp mode. It revved a lot quicker. Now it's idling fine. There's no black smoke. Uh, I didn't get that flashing check engine light in the sequence that I found on the forums and on YouTube but either way it looks like it's reset maybe because the batteries were disconnected for 24 hours but oh it's just such a relief um, I was <coughs> I'm not a I'm not ashamed to say I was stressing big time that this was going to be a lot of money um, we've been there done that and I can't do that again so, yeah, it's a bit of sweet. I'm really happy, absolutely stoked it's working. And uh, I'm gonna move the little gray mountain goat that's behind us here. I'm gonna move that out of the way just in case I take it for a test run and then something isn't right and I can't get back up the driveway because I need the other car to get our daughter from work and for me to get to work tomorrow. So, fingers crossed, it all looks good. I'll plug the scan gauge back in reluctantly. I thought it might have been causing issues, but I think it's just got to the point that EGR valve was ready to go. And by having the scan gauge, it's been giving me a bit of a warning the last couple of weeks with that check engine light on, uh, which I just kept clearing. And obviously a bit like if there's something wrong in your body and you don't address it, it just gets worse. So I'd say that's what's happened. I'm super stoked that the car started, it's idling the heat idle up is working fine and um, it looks like touch wood that that's sorted the problem out so i'll uh, i'll plug the gauge back in in case i get that light on again uh super wrapped i'm so excited that it's it started it's idling it's running i'll take it for a run and hopefully that's all we need to do if i've got to change that suction control valve i'll take the egr valve back off because it's 10 minute job now that i know what is there and what i'm doing and i can always change that scv or suction control valve later on if need be so anyway i will take it for a run and uh put it at the end of the clip and uh obviously yeah if people are wondering this car has just hit uh, 160,000 k so i bought it about two years ago had 72,000 on it and it's now just clocked over 160 last week actually so i think the egr valves i don't know how long they're designed to last uh, i know they are prone to failing on any vehicle any make and model they can do that it's just the hot fumes and that ends up yeah causing that carbon soot build up in there and i think over time it's just being stressed and it's snapped the other thing worth noting too which did get me excited as soon as i turned the car off i heard that funny noise coming out of the egr valve which i mentioned on the facebook post that i put up when this problem started when you switch the key off you can literally hear it sounds like something electronic like a solenoid it made three a three sequence sound and then clicking and then stops and i used to hear it when i'm pulling the driveway of an afternoon and turn the car off because it's fairly quiet here normally that sound and i'd hear that noise and wonder what it was well as soon as i turned the key off now it made that noise again it hasn't done that for the last couple of weeks and i think the days that i come out to get in the car to go home i'd have no check light going to work and then i'd 
the car had sit for eight hours while I'm at work. I turned the key on, started, that check light was on straight away. And I think, my theory, I could be wrong, I'm not a diesel mechanic, but my theory is that that butterfly valve in there that's supposed to open and close accordingly, I've driven to work and it's obviously been jammed in place. I switched the car on and it's not opening or closing whichever way appropriately. And that's why the light's on the minute I turned the key on. So just even hearing that, as soon as I switched the car off, then hearing that noise again, uh, oh, it's, it's like winning a lot, I'll tell you. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, I know you don't all have Navaras, but it's a simple repair replacement that you could do yourself on any vehicle, um, as long as it's easily accessible. On, on the Navara, the EGR valve is super easy. It's right there at the front of the motor. I know some of the three litre patrols and other vehicles, they're tucked up at the back of the engine or up underneath, they're a pain to get to, but that's super easy. 100 bucks for a new one, two year warranty or three year warranty, I think it was. Genuine, they're about a thousand from what I read online. So if I get even three years out of it and I've still got the car, then I had to replace it. I'm still way in front financially. Three year warranty, if it dies after that, 100 bucks, I'll throw another one on. But yeah, just keep an eye on the check engine lights. If you get the code, mine was 0409, which is EGR issue. Don't cheat like I do and just keep resetting it because obviously it ends up costing you in the long run. I didn't know originally how hard it was going to be to replace that or how expensive and I sort of just put it to the back of mine. So good tip, don't keep ignoring the symptoms. Go and see your doctor. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget we're on Instagram and Facebook and uh, I really hope this helps you guys out there as well. Stress less, camp more. Catch on the tracks. Cheers. And the oil blibo, which was handy this morning, they cut about 200 mil down and just cut all the road up. So <laughs> we had to get out before the trucks got in. Ignition to on, count to three, then you depress and release the accelerator pedal five times hard and fast. Then you count to 10 and fully depress the accelerator pedal. While it's down, you count to 12 and the engine light should start blinking. You release the pedal, count to 10, push it in again, count to 10, let your foot off the accelerator, turn off the ignition, then start your engine, it should be done. So 